Welcome back. In our last session, we talked about op art, and we finished uh, using a Sharpie to create this op art image with all the lines kind of running into the center. And we talked about the curvature of the line going one way and the second one going the other way, creating repetition is what gives op art the illusion of um, wiggliness to it. Um, in this session, we're going to color in our op art work. Okay, I started coloring mine to kind of give you the feel of what it will look like at the end, but two things that we want to talk about. One is pattern. Pattern is repeating something in the same way to go over and over and over and over and do something the same way each time we'll create a pattern. So here we have a pattern of triangles, here we have triangle, circle, triangle, circle, and then here we just have color, blue, red, blue, red. So you can see here I've created a combination of pattern color here and here. I've kind of made that and I'm going to create a pattern all the way around my center. But I also have a pattern going orange, red, orange, red, orange, red, all the way into the center. I also have then a second pattern here going all the way into the center. So you could think of this as I had red and I had orange, A and B color, and I had my dark blue and my light blue being my A and my B color. Okay. Um, so those are my two patterns. We're going to talk just a little bit more about those uh, in a second. But next, uh, you can see in my drawing here, I've used value or shading to create a, a even more of a curvature to this piece. So shading, well, value is the lightness or darkness of an area or object. So here in this little uh, picture I drew, you know, the darkest part of the circle or the sphere is here and in the shadow, the lightest part is where the light is hitting it here. This is going to uh, come into your drawing using pressure. However hard you push down with your colored pencil is going to make it either darker or lighter. If you press lightly, you'll get a light area. If you press harder, you'll get a darker area. Um, so. As we start coloring, you're going to choose two colors. I'm going to start with my blue and my, my light blue and my dark blue here um, so that we can color in this next piece over since I'm going along with um, the idea of pattern. All right, so first you can see I used this dark bluish violet there. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to write an A and then I'm going to write B, A, a. And I'm going to skip one each time since I know that that is my pattern. And here's my B color, B color, B, B, and then I have a little B color there. Okay. Then I'm going to take my next one and I'm just going to do the same thing. Notice I started with my red here as my A color and then B, A, 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 A. Okay. And it will help you to write this down so that as you color, you don't kind of lose track of where you are. Because sometimes as you're coloring, your mind tends to wander and then you might make a mistake, which you don't want to do. So to get started, you're just going to kind of take one pencil and you can really do this in a variety of different ways. Um, I like to just kind of not trade pencils every couple seconds and I like to just then shade in lightly by pressing down just ever so slightly. I like to shade in the A sections. Okay, and as I shade this in, um, I try to do a nice even job so there's no white spaces. All right, and I try to do it just to get rid of the A. I should just press lightly and the A should kind of disappear. If you need to turn your paper to work so it's more comfortable for your hand, by all means. Um, I would say try to keep your lines the same pressure so that you don't have little splotches that are darker or lighter yet. Um, that will come uh, as we get to the next section. Okay, so finish those off. And then as you get those finished, you're going to start to press harder on one side or the other. You can see over here I've pressed hard on the downward side uh, or on the left side and then on the right side I've left it a little bit lighter. You can see on these ones I pressed harder on the edges and left it lighter in the middle. It doesn't matter really what you do as long as you're consistent. So since I started on this other line of um, my cool colors 
being uh, dark on the left side, I'm going to continue that idea into this next area of coloring. So you can see um, I'm trying to go fast. Do take your time. I would rather this look nice and finished um, and neat than have it be sloppy. And if you come up to me and show me sloppy work, I will turn you right around and have you um, redo it. And it would be a shame to have to start all over. So please do a nice, neat job of your coloring. All right, so here we go. I have my bluish violet areas done. And then I'm going to go back and make the darker areas. So I'm going to take about, you can kind of see that line I drew about right there, kind of right down the center. And then I'm going to push hard to color in this side of the space. Okay, This used to be just a space, now it's kind of a shape and we're giving it some form by putting the shading in. So it's kind of turning three-dimensional. You can almost, if you want to, and you do it neatly and thoughtfully, almost leave like curved lines um, in here, like cross hatching, that are going to curve um, this shape even more. Rather than coloring back and forth horizontally or vertically, I'm coloring on a curve. You can see those lines in there that I put, and those curves are actually going to help to trick the eye even more if you leave those in ever so slightly. All right. So what you're going to do is we don't need to watch me color the whole thing because I think it's going to take quite a while. Um, so you can get started on the coloring and just make sure that you keep a consistent pattern uh, with like warm colors, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool, all the way around. And then um, make sure that you keep consistent with A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, so that by the end it will really pop. And in um, class, I'll have my demonstration hanging up. Uh, and that is how you finish and shade your op art picture, creating patterns and using value and shading to give it even more form.